Artificial intelligence is an idea whose time has come. Humanity has opened the Pandora's box. And there is no way back. At the forefront of it all is a 375 employee startup overpowering tech giants like Google. OpenAI took the world by storm with its latest releases of ChatGPT and Dolly 2. What started as a non-profit research organization with the goal of reaching AGI and democratizing it to everybody turned into an increasingly secretive and commercialized organization whose trustworthiness is doubtful. It begs the question, how did we end up here? And should we be worried about what's next? Over the entrance of OpenAI, it reads, Liberty consists in the division of power, absolutism in the concentration of power. This was the case in August 2016. If it's still true, I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if they removed it. Like Google removing the don't be evil clause from its code of conduct in 2018. But OpenAI started with a mission that I can get behind. Our mission is to ensure that artificial general intelligence benefits all of humanity. The company was founded in December 2015 by Big Shots Sam Altman, Reid Hoffman, Jessica Livingston, Elon Musk, Ilya Sutzgever, Peter Thiel and others. A team that believed that if there is even a slight chance that AGI will happen in the near future, it's important that no person, company or even state has exclusive access to it. As Edmund Burke said, the greater the power, the more dangerous the abuse. Someone may use it in a way that is bad. Um, or, 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 and even if they weren't going to use it in a way that's bad, but somebody could take it from them and use it in a way that's bad. That, that I think is quite a big danger. So I think we must have democratization of AI technology and make it widely available. You know, the reason that obviously uh, uh, Yumi and the rest of the team uh, you know, created OpenAI. And so the open source non-profit organization was born. Elon Musk recently stated that neither is true anymore, but we will get there. It's not that one-sided. You can argue that there are good reasons for OpenAI's shift in strategy. Before venturing into natural language processing, OpenAI built a model that became the first AI system to defeat the world champions of Dota 2, a 5 vs 5 esports game. They also introduced new algorithms like proximal policy optimization, which I used in my bachelor's thesis, and explored robotics. It all seemingly went well. The research was made publicly available as advertised and the rate of advancements was superb. In 2018, Elon Musk left the board because of a conflict of interest as Tesla entered the field of AI. He, by the way, already took away Andrei Karpathy from OpenAI, who became Director of Artificial Intelligence at Tesla. Karpathy announced his return to OpenAI just a few days ago. Shortly after Musk's departure, Sam Altman became the CEO. The following year, 2019, is the turning point. The secrecy rises and so does the commercialization. The year starts with the release of GPT-2, a large language model and predecessor to GPT-3 and ChatGPT. Although release might be the wrong term here. Due to our concerns about malicious applications of the technology, we are not releasing the trained model. We are not releasing the dataset, training code or GPT-2 model weights. Uh, what? Yep, OpenAI decided to withhold this information. The proclaimed reason was basically that GPT-2 is so good it can be dangerous when released to the public. And this is a really tricky situation, because of course it's important to think about safety and security when developing AI, but at the same time it somehow feels like OpenAI went against what they stood for. They were now the only ones in control and informed about the newest breakthrough. They gradually released larger models of GPT-2 to the public, but not from the beginning. There might be a second reason for this decision though. It was a PR stunt. It created hype around GPT-2 and made it sound more advanced than it really was. But why would they do that? Why would that be necessary for a non-profit organization? Well, not even a month after GPT-2, OpenAI announced a new for-profit company called OpenAI LP. The GPT-2 story was a way to a better funding. OpenAI LP is said to be a capped profit company. The cap was a 100x on the initial investments though, so it's not really a cap honestly. The fundamental idea of OpenAI LP is that investors and employees can get a capped return if we succeed at our mission, which allows us to raise investment capital and attract employees with startup-like equity. Everything above that cap flows back into the OpenAI nonprofit entity whose board is also controlling the new company. 
I believe it's very easy to scrutinize OpenAI for this decision, effectively moving from a non-profit to a, let's say, semi-for-profit company. But if you really think it through, you might realize that this was the only way. This was the only way forward. They really had no other options. The costs of running a research-focused AI company are insane. To run ChatGPT alone, OpenAI burns through an estimated 100k per day or $3 million per month. At the same time, the competitors are incredibly financialized. OpenAI would simply not stand a chance against its competitors and on its way to achieve its mission without lots of investment. But what about the sketchy GPT-2 release? The OpenAI charter actually predicted that this will eventually happen. We expect that safety and security concerns will reduce our traditional publishing in the future, while increasing the importance of sharing safety, policy and standards research. So can we really be mad about any of this? Yes, because it gets much worse. In early 2020, Karen Howe, senior AI editor at MIT Technology Review, spoke with several current and former OpenAI employees. She published her findings in a piece titled The Messy, Secretive Reality Behind OpenAI's Bid to Save the World. There is an overarching theme throughout the employees' replies. Their accounts suggest that OpenAI, for all its noble aspirations, is obsessed with maintaining secrecy. Elon Musk agreed with this, stating that OpenAI should be more open. One example is the Foresight team, which runs experiments to test how far they can push AI capabilities forward by training existing algorithms with increasingly large amounts of data and computing power. For roughly six months, these results were hidden from the public, because OpenAI sees this knowledge as its primary competitive advantage. Employees and interns were explicitly instructed not to reveal them, and those who left signed non-disclosure agreements. This is certainly not what open source culture looks like, and it's very concerning on multiple levels. One of them being a political bias that can easily be introduced into the models. This is seemingly already the case and an incredible power. You can argue that social media companies have the power to select the next president simply by adjusting their algorithms. OpenAI might become an even greater force at doing so. But at this point in time it at least was like a level playing field for everyone outside of OpenAI. The API access they allow makes it possible to restrict misuse as the model itself is not available. It's a trade-off, but it's better than nothing. In late 2020, however, this last straw breaks. Microsoft got an exclusive license for the GPT-3 language model. This turns OpenAI into closed AI, as users on Twitter argued. Elon Musk chimed in again, stating that this does seem like the opposite of open. OpenAI is essentially captured by Microsoft. So what can we take away from this? In the beginning, this level of secrecy was never the intention, but it has since become habitual. Over time, the leadership has moved away from its original belief that openness is the best way to build beneficial AGI. Do I believe that OpenAI is trustworthy? No. Do I believe they are evil? No again. It's complex. Some of the ethical concerns simply have not been sufficiently answered yet. What makes a model secure to release? Should a doubtfully open and non-profit organization be able to decide what is secure? Probably not. But is it the lesser evil than a dangerous model in the wrong hands? What if OpenAI are the wrong hands themselves? Sam Altman's WorldCoin has certainly left a mark on his reputation for me. Elon Musk has been quoted here several times asking for more openness. At the same time, he wants Microsoft to shut down its implementation of ChatGPT in Bing because it's not safe yet. The problem lies in the thing itself. In preparation for this video, I found a YouTube comment that really resonates here. The problem is that AI technology isn't trustworthy in any hands, it being corporations, governments, or even the general public through open source. Corporations can use it to further their monopolies, governments can use it as a tool for power, and people can use it in criminal and black market activities. Humanity has opened a Pandora's box, and there are only two ways. Either everyone will have it, or no one will have it. However, the last option is impossible in my eyes at this stage. We reached a path-dependent event, an idea whose time has come. The genie won't go back into the bottle. You might think AI is still a joke, but it's been a decade of 10x improvement year over year, and there is no halt in sight. Which means the most sensible option left in my eyes is access for everyone. That will still be chaotic, and it's unknown if it's a net positive or negative, but it's better than one entity wielding this power in the foreseeable future. We should strive for truly open open AI, or an open competitor, 
The silver lining is that Microsoft does not seem to get exclusive rights for ChatGPT and further models. Additionally, there are open source competitors coming up like Stability AI who were part of the Stable Diffusion release. Huge sums of money are necessary to keep the pace of centralized entities. It's absolutely not an easy task. And one key question remains. Is AGI even possible in the first place? Some experts say it will happen this decade. Others say it will never happen. To learn why, check out this video next. To not miss further videos, consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you for watching.